There we go. Okay, so welcome everyone to a, a little hour of bookish self-care for coaches. We are talking all things summer reading for coaches today. I've got three main things planned. Why we should prioritize our own reading this summer in case we needed a little bit of a nudge to make the time for it. How can we build a TBR stack that we love and why is it so important to actually build a physical TBR like this rather than just a list of books? And of course, what books should we read next? I've got 15 books that I'm recommending that hopefully will spark conversation so that we all start pouring some recommendations into that chat box. So we walk away with a really robust list that we can choose from. So if you haven't already, if I've just let you in from the waiting room, I would love for you to introduce yourself in the chat box. Let us know what you're reading or what you would recommend. We've got some great books in there. We've got some adult fiction, some middle grade novels, some great professional text. Oh, the gift of story. I actually am just starting that right now. It is beautiful. Shifting the balance. Just finished that one. Let's just keep sharing and keep having that chat box hop all hour long. Um, for those that just popped in, I will make sure to capture all of those titles in the chat box and format them into a handout. But you're welcome to try to keep up with them in your notebook as we go. So grab a drink, grab your notebook, think about some of the books you might recommend, and let's jump in. So all of you here know me somehow. Maybe it's through my coaching work. Maybe it's through my work with teachers and, and leading literate lives. But either way, if you don't know me quite so well yet, I'm a literacy teacher educator at the University at Albany in upstate New York. I love all things coaching, all things reading, all things writing, and how to infuse all of those things with technology. Now I'm on a specific mission this summer, and this is what that mission is. I just finished reading, well, not too long ago with my Get Literate family, some of you that are here, The Joy of Missing Out and You Happier, and both of those books recommended coming up with a mission statement for yourself, whether it was for your whole life or just for the next immediate amount of time. This is my mission statement for the summer. I am a book loving, notebook hoarding for sure, literacy teacher educator on a mission to change lives one book and one notebook at a time, starting with coaches and teachers and then ultimately influencing students. And that's why we're here today. We're here to talk about books that can fuel us over the summer, that can give us a little bit of reading self-care, hopefully just help us unwind and learn and relax and laugh and cry and do all of the things in the pages of the book while we're sitting outside with our feet up and a nice drink in our hands, hopefully. Okay, so let's start with the why. Now you're here, so you know the power of a literate life, but in case you need a reminder to prioritize it a bit this summer, to give yourself, give yourself space for it every day, I have just summarized the research. I haven't cited all the research here, but I've summarized what the benefits of reading are. That way we can make sure we bring it into our own lives this summer without guilt, and then hopefully back to the classroom as well. So if we start with the physical benefits of reading, there is research available to show that when we read, our heart rate slows down, it actually gets a bit calmer. Our muscles relax. If we read at night, it actually supports more restful sleep. This next bullet I need, it actually lowers your stress by 68%, at least in this group that was studied, and can even potentially lengthen our lives by up to two years because of those benefits. Now you might be thinking, well, how long, how often? And I can't just read all day with relaxed muscles and a nice calm heart rate. The research shows that just six minutes of reading a day was all you needed to start benefiting from some of these effects. Six minutes. We can all find six minutes somewhere, right? So six minutes for these physical benefits as well as the emotional and cognitive benefits that I'm sharing next. So cognitive benefits, this is more of the typical benefit that we might think about, especially as teachers, educators. We know that reading can boost our vocabulary and our knowledge in many, many ways. It can improve our memory, actually strengthen the brain, which then can prevent age-related cognitive decline. 
There's some research out there with Alzheimer's patients and dementia patients of how reading keeps the mind strong. It keeps those synapses firing and therefore can prevent some of that age-related decline that we can sometimes see. And then last but not least, we have the emotional benefits. Lots of research to show that consistent reading can alleviate depression. Couple of reasons why, right? You're taking time out for self-care, you are calming your heart rate and you're relaxing. And perhaps what you're reading about is something that matters to you, which is kind of this triple whammy of why it may help people who have depression. It also boosts happiness for a lot of those same reasons. But my favorite emotional benefit is that last one there, that it actually increases our ability to empathize. And I've talked about this in other workshops, but it's because of this really amazing phenomenon called mirror neurons. And that when we're watching something happen to someone else, the same neurons in our brain fire as if they were actually happening to us because of this mirror neuron technique. And so that means we can read about an important event or read about something happening to a character and we can feel a lot of the same feelings that that character has felt that we never would have the opportunity to feel in real life. And that builds empathy, that builds perspective. And that is definitely what the world needs right now. So we've got physical benefits, cognitive benefits and emotional benefits. I would love if you just head to the chat box and you let me know which benefit you need most right now. What do you need most this summer? Those physical benefits, those cognitive benefits or those emotional benefits? I definitely need the emotional benefits myself. I think we spend all year boosting our cognitive benefits. I need rom-coms, I need happy books, I need emotional benefits. Yeah, and the physical, right? Who could, why do cardio? We can just we can just read a book and get the the heart rate benefits. Certainly lowering stress. Summer I'm declaring this the summer of self-care for sure. Okay, so now that we know the why, and we're gonna to pledge to find at least those six minutes and hopefully more is whatever your schedule will allow. Let's talk about why it's important to our coaching as well. First and foremost, it's important to our health, but in terms of our coaching, we know that reading, and if we pair it with our own writing, it fuels us as a lifelong reader and learner. And if we are charged with leading the learning of others, then the best way to do that is to act as that lead learner and do it ourselves. So we know where our teachers are coming from. We know what we mean when we recommend and kind of offer literate life tips for our teachers and our students. It also boosts our book knowledge. So if we are readers and we keep up on our reading life, then we're gonna have really great books to share with teachers and students, not just our old favorites that we rely on, but current, diverse, brand new, beautiful books and formats. It helps us build our coaching libraries. Those of you here know I love using picture books in my work with teachers. And having a really strong reading life helps us build our own coaching libraries, whether that's on a shelf in a classroom or on a movable cart, or even the trunk of your car that you take it with you, depending on what your coaching looks like, it can boost our libraries. And hopefully that, that FOMO or, um, you know, just kind of sparking that motivation in someone else will help us bring that same love of reading to our teachers and then therefore our students. So we've got a lot of the why to make sure that we make space for it this summer. But next comes the how. So there are really, in, in my mind, in the framework that I have, three different ways that you can boost your reading life this summer. And depending on what you choose, you want to choose books that will fuel that particular aspect. So some of us might need to work on our reading habits. We're not reading consistently yet. We don't have a physical TBR stack of books ready whenever we are. We want to make sure that we build the systems in place over the summer to actually find the time and the books to read. Some of us, if we already have those habits firmly in place, we need to focus more on our reading hearts. We need to figure out what genres light us up. We wanna push our boundaries a bit 
and try something new. We want to stretch ourselves. We want to set goals around our reading. That's where we might kind of focus on our, our reading hearts. And then yet there are still some others who realize they need a community. In order to keep their habits and hearts going, they need to talk books with other people, whether that's a book club in person, a virtual book club, social media, or just picking up the phone and actually talking to a friend about the books that we've read. So habits, hearts, and communities. Now, I mentioned that our book choice is going to vary depending on what that goal is. So if you need to work on your habits because you don't find the time that you want to read, you need to make sure that the books that you're choosing are exactly what you want to read, that move quickly, and might even be short so that you can feel accomplished and keep going. But if your goal is your reading heart, you're going to want to branch into other genres and formats and topics that you might not have before so that you can see what's possible in the reading life you've already established. And if you are focused on your community, then your book choice is going to revolve around the books that you know other people are talking about, that your book club is reading, that the Facebook group is discussing online. So before we even get into the book recommendations in about a minute, I want you to think about which you are going to focus on this summer. It may be all three, but which one is your priority? So habits, hearts, or communities. Now I've got a fun little quiz to help you figure that out as well. So if you have a device where you have a QR code scanner, you can scan that. Not that you have to take the quiz now, but if you're not sure which one you want to focus on, this is a quick, fun nine question quiz that gives me a chance to say, I think you need habits or hearts or community. And here are nine suggestions for going about finding it. I'm going to go ahead and put the link in the chat box to it. Just a fun little quiz. It's a fun little quiz that took me a really not fun long time to make to figure out the technology, but I'm awfully proud that I finally did it. So here it is. It looks like we've got some ideas of what it might be. I see some of us need community. A couple of us need community. Some of us need habits. Thank you, Amy, for the book love and the framework love. So if you want to just keep that link I am going to give you a handout with all of the books and all of the links mentioned at the end of our session, but this is just a fun quiz to think, what do I need this summer and what are the top recommendations for getting there? So as we talk about our books, which we're going to do in just a second, I want you to think about which ones are going to serve you because you could want to put all 20 something books that we talk about on your TBR list, but chances are we won't read all of them. So I want you to be picky and selective and selfish and think which books are gonna help me do what I want to do this summer. If I just wanna build my reading habit and I want lots of self-care, I want books that I can't wait to read no matter what the genre is or what anybody else says I should read. If I wanna boost my reading heart, then I'm gonna be really careful and select books and topics and perspectives and authors that'll push me a little bit out of my comfort zone. And if it's community, you're going to want the books that people are buzzing about now or that your book club is going to read so that you can talk about them. So that said, let's get to the book recommendations. So your challenge after today is to create a TBR stack like the one, let's just drop them, the one I have here. Now, TBR stacks are important because they are real, live, tangible books that are waiting for you. You could have a list in your notebook, and you will at the end of today, but that's not enough, right? You could have a, a couple of a books in mind that you're going to go purchase. That's not enough. They have to be present with you so that they take those goals about what you want to read, and they actually put them into concrete reminders that you can put on your kitchen table or your dining room table, which is where everything in my house ends up, or somewhere visible. I know I'm gonna, Dawn, I know that you got one of those cute little TBR baskets like I did, a basket around the house that you can see those books as a reminder that you want to give yourself that bit of self-care. So your challenge after today is to actually go build 
that TBR stack. So today is the first step. We're gonna explore books, you're gonna browse them, you probably are gonna have tabs open, finding them on Amazon, know that I'll give you the list afterwards. When we're done, you're going to have the chance to choose them, stack them up, go borrow them from the library, purchase them if you want to indulge, put them on your Kindle if you are more of a digital reader. And then the third part is to actually display them somewhere in your home so that you remember to read them or move the, the Kindle app to the front screen of your iPad or make sure that Kindle is set somewhere out front and center. So lots of us have digital lists. We take pictures of books we want to read. We might put our books on an Amazon wish list or a bookshop list, or in my case, Goodreads, but then they stay there. And I don't know about you. I don't know if you know your exact number. If you do, you can put it in the chat box. But my Goodreads to be read shelf is quite, quite long. And I forget them. I browse them every so often and, and can't even remember why or when I put them on my TBR stack. But if you build your TBR, it's going to set your, yourself up for better success this summer. And so your challenge is when you get your TBR built after this session, take a picture of it, share it on your favorite social media platform, tag me, I'm Afanito Lit on just about everything. Only thing I am not on yet is, is TikTok. I just can't do it yet. I, I, maybe I'll figure it out later. Uh, but I will pick a few people who have been willing to share and I will send some book love your way in an attempt to help you build that TBR and set yourself up for a priority full of reading and writing this summer. Okay, now what should I read next? We've got some good recommendations in the chat box. Let's keep them coming as I share these core texts, I would love for you to, to share others in the chat box, either chiming in saying that you loved this book too, or who, who might love this book or other titles that are similar, other books by the author, so that we can end up with a really long list sparked with these 15. So I've got 15, but I've divided them into five, five and five. I've got five books that are specific to spark your coaching life but they are actually not coaching books. And I did that on purpose. Five books to recharge your personal reading life. So adult fiction and or nonfiction and five books to support your work with students. So young adult, middle grade and a picture book thrown in there as well. And in between each we'll stop so that we can throw more ideas into the chat box or unmute ourselves and talk about the books that we want to recommend. Okay, first up, this was a book that I just read recently with my Get Literate community, and it is You Happier, The Seven Neuroscience Secrets of Feeling Good Braced on Your Bane Type. Now, I will warn you, this for me was not bedtime reading. This was not a nice, easy flow through book. This was dense. And for those of you in the group that read it, please feel free to put your comments in the chat box as well. But I loved it because. Oh my goodness, Katie, 593. I just saw your Goodreads title. I think you have me beat. <laughs> um, I am recommending this because Dr. Amen talks about the different brain types that we all have and that knowing our brain type can help us feel better, work better, live better, feel happier, and explain some of our little quirks that maybe we feel bad about and now we know are literally the way we are. And so we can support our brain in different ways. As a coach, we have so much going on. We work with so many different people with so many different brain types. And just knowing that these exist and leaning into what your type is can be really helpful and maybe even a game changer for coaching. I'm a brain type nine which means I am persistent and sensitive and cautious. Gosh, like three difficult combinations, but there's also balanced and a whole bunch of other brain types. And just knowing that can be some really great information to arm yourself with, to help yourself, yourself literally feel better and be happier. 
So you happier is my top recommendation. Amy, I know you loved it just as much as I did along with other Dr. Amen things. And yes, I am still taking the happy saffron supplement in the book. And I'll fill you in in our next Get Literate meeting of how it's going. Okay, book number two. Oh, I love this book cover and I love this book. It's Joyful, The Surprising Power of Ordinary Things to Create Extraordinary Happiness by Ingrid Fitel Lee. I first found Ingrid in a TED Talk. She was talking about the two things that can make life more joyful based on research. And it came down to color and shapes. Color and shapes when used appropriately can really up the level of joy that people feel in their environments. And it made her question the way we set up schools and hospitals and other places that are important, but could be a lot more joyful than they are. So this book is about how we can become more joyful in our everyday lives, but it also has some really great opportunities to apply it to our schools and our districts and even our classrooms as well. So that's joyful, the surprising power of ordinary things to create extraordinary happiness. And again, if you've read them or these books are sparking more titles for you, please throw them into the chat box. Oh, you have to read this one if you haven't yet. This was a big game changer for me. It's called Present Over Perfect, Leaving Behind Frantic for a Simpler more soulful way of living. Shauna's writing is just beautiful. It's lyrical, it's inviting. This book, I just sat and I had to read it cover to cover in one sitting, ignoring everything else, and then read it again to really get the lessons behind it. So many quotes, so many lessons I needed to learn and such a beautiful book for kind of calling you out on what it is you want and how you want to live and then how you're actually going to get somewhere different. So present over perfect. And I would say as educators, we're pretty frantic, especially right now. And while we might not be able to change our lives completely given what's going on in today's educational climate, there are lots of things we can do to feel better ourselves. And so I highly recommend this. This isn't a new book. I can't remember how many years old it is, but it is definitely worth adding to your stack, as is her newest one, which is going to appear on that bottom right-hand corner. I guess I haven't learned that yet by the same author. So this was just published, I want to say, a couple of months ago, continuing her journey of things that she still needs to learn as well. And she has some really open, honest conversations about how her life has changed since present over perfect and how we all still continually have lessons to learn about living a more simple, soulful kind of life. So present over perfect, I recommend first. And then I think you'll definitely want to lean into, I guess I haven't learned that yet. Anybody here read those books? Yeah, first summer book, it might definitely be definitely be a good one. I'm just scrolling through the chat box and audiobook as well. I am a terrible audiobook reader, but I imagine, especially if it was narrated by the author, this would be a beautiful book to listen to. Okay, we've got to keep going because we have lots of books to share. Next up is not a new book as well, but we're talking about books for our coaching life that aren't necessarily coaching books. And I would recommend this one for sure. This is Gretchen Rubin's The Four Tendencies. Lots of us in this room already know what our tendency is and we harness the power of it every day in our coaching. But I love this book because it is a very quick and easy personality focused, well, no, the book isn't quick and easy, but the personality quiz, I guess, to figure out what your tendency is. And basically there are four types of people. There are upholders, obligers, questioners, and rebels. Upholders do what they need to do when they need to do it without fail, even if it's going to stress them out. Obligers will do what they need to do, especially for others. But when it comes to taking care of themselves, they don't do that quite so well, and they need some external accountability. 
questioners just question everything and will do something when they feel that their answer to that question has satisfied them. And rebels, well, rebels just kind of do what they want, when they want, when it works for them. Why is this important to coaching? Because we work with all kinds of teachers. We have one kind of tendency, which means we work best with other people who are like us, but we still have to work with the other three kinds of personalities. This book shows us how to do that. It shows us how to harness the powerful and positive aspects of our personality, makes us mindful of what our shortcomings might be, and then helps us figure out how to work with all four tendencies in the same room, in the same position, in the same district. And so if you have teachers where, you know, some teachers you work really well with and some you don't, this book may help you understand the some that you don't and help you feel better about your coaching and not take things personally. That I think is a really great lesson that comes away from this book. It doesn't have to be our fault that someone is questioning us or seems like they're rebelling against what we're saying. It's actually just the way that they are. Shar, you're an obliger, <laughs> too much of an obliger. I am an upholder. I know we've got obligers and upholders in here. Um, and a, there's a lot of obligers in the world, but especially in education as service providers, we do lots for others. A little bit harder to do those things for yourself. So if you're looking for a book that's really focused on coaching, right? The others were more focused on us and figuring out a more simpler way of life. But if you wanna really narrow in on the coaching and how you can better work with a mix of teachers, then this book is for you. Yep, Amy's an upholder. Patty, your husband's an upholder and you're thankful. Yeah, she's got some interesting things on, on how those pairings work out as well. So definitely recommend it along with the one that just appeared in the bottom right of the screen, The Happiness Project. This one is definitely an older book, but it doesn't matter. If you need some happiness, if you need to figure out what you want, if you need to figure out how to change the way you think about yourself, the way you think about your coaching position and just want to do things differently, then the happiness project is for you. It helps map out literally a year long journey to become a happier person by Gretchen showing you what her year long journey looks like. And I love it because our journeys are all different, right? If you want to nerd out like I would with books or tracking our data and using planners, then go for it. That's what makes you happy. But for another one, it might be getting the heck out of a routine and going somewhere else and being spontaneous, then you can find you're happy too. Oh, we've got some results coming in. So community, community, community. Oh, thank you for recommending that, Amy. Yes, the gratitude diaries. I've got that, I'm writing that down again, but I had that from when you shared that in our Get Literate Facebook group. Okay, my last one to recommend before I'll have you turn some channels or some books into the chat box is Let It Be Easy. This is a book definitely for your own personal life as well as your coaching life. Simple ways to stop stressing and start living. This is a book that doesn't have to be read cover to cover. They're actually a collection of really short stories and short vignettes trying to kind of illustrate the lessons that we might need to learn and that their fact might be an easier way for a lot of the things we make stressful. And so this is a book that can be read in one sitting, it can be read across multiple sittings, just picking and choosing. But I also love it because we could literally lift out a story, you know, copy a page or two and actually share it with teachers. What are we overcomplicating in our classroom? What are we overcomplicating in our work together and our work in the district that actually could be a lot easier than it is? These stories are perfect to copy and share with teachers as either an opening move in a professional development session, as a quick little article study. If you're looking to bring that kind of work into your coaching, then this book is ideal for that. Along with just popping in my head, um, Cleo Wade's book, which now the title is escaping me. Sometimes it's behind me, sometimes it's not. If, what is it? 
Heart talk? Heart talk, thank you, yes. Cleo Wade's heart talk. I, I don't have the image to come up here because it just sprung to mind, but that's another great one for copying certain pages and sharing it with teachers as part of professional learning. So let it be easy for yourself, then helps you figure out how are we overcomplicating things in our schools and how can we just let it be easier? So those are my five for your coaching life. I would love for you to share in the chat box what you're reading right now to support your coaching or what's on your TBR. I know some of you mentioned them earlier when we first got into this session, but if you could jot them again now, now that we're talking about kind of nonfiction coaching related or coaching adjacent books, I would love to have them go into the chat box. We had things mentioned earlier, like shifting the balance. We had the gift of story. I'm kind of going back through the chat box to kind of call out a couple of them. Let's see. Wow, we had a lot of things worked, worked in there. I can't even get to them yet. There we go, shifting the balance. Gift of story again, the joy of reading. That was the other one I was thinking of. Student-centered coaching from a distance. Again, I'll compile all of these. I would just love to see them in here. The PD book, Seven Habits That Transform Professional Development. Oh, I love anything by Elena. Reading Above the Fray. Literacy Workshop, Coaching Your Classroom. Excellent, love all of these coming in. Ask Powerful Questions, Atlas of the Heart. Whew, my brain is full from reading that book right now. The PD book, The Art of Coaching, wonderful. I'm just jotting down a couple of these. Think Again by Adam Grant. I do not know that one. I know of Adam Grant, but I need to jot this one down specifically. Oh, yay, Amy, so glad to see Leading Literate Lives is helping you out a bit with the framework. Wonderful. We have got a lot of books listed here already. Okay, so coaching books, coaching adjacent books, um, definitely to first start with us and then move their way into the classroom. But if I could just wish only one kind of reading for you, it would be this next one, which is your own personal reading that is just because you want to. So books that are for adults, for pleasurable reading. And I've got five that I'm recommending, most that I've read recently in my Get Literate community with others, but books that I think are, are worth your time this summer. So they are kind of, I don't wanna say they're all light, and they're not all rom-com-ish, although some of them are, but they're books that I think are gonna make you smile and they're books that you're gonna to wanna to keep reading and keep getting through. So the first one is called 30 Things I Love About Myself. And this is a book where, gosh, it made me smile. It made me blush a lot too. Um, but I love the idea behind it. The main character is kind of going through a crisis of sorts, ends up finding herself in arrested in jail overnight for a ridiculous reason, hating on herself and her lack of a relationship and her difficulties at work. And she makes a pledge that by the time she turns 30 the next year, she is going to find 30 things that she loves about herself. And it chronicles her year long journey of this kind of self care and finding the things that she likes about herself, she loves about herself, she's good at in an attempt to reinvent herself and the life that, that she's living. It's fun, it makes me smile. I mentioned already, it made, it made me blush a lot. Some things I you know, related to, some things I totally did not, but I loved the premise. Right? What if we spent the summer finding things that we liked about ourselves? We would feel different by the end of that, right? And so this book is a nice spark to remind yourself to look for the good, not just in other people like we're used to doing, but for the good in yourself. So it's a nice, fun read that might set you off on a really fun 
summer project. Book number two is the reading list. Now this one's pretty popular right now. I am seeing it all over Facebook groups and social media feeds. This is about a widow who lost his wife and is struggling greatly. He's kind of keeping himself holed up in the house. He doesn't want to do much till finally he pushes himself to go to the library where his late wife loved to be. When he's there, he meets, I believe her name is Felicia, at the library, or maybe Alicia, um, at the library, who doesn't want to be at the library either, but ends up finding a reading list tucked into one of the books. This widow are asked for recommendations. She doesn't really have any, so she just starts with recommending one on the list. And how the book progresses back and forth between multiple perspectives, if, if that's a book that you like, that kind of format, it talks about how they form this unlikely friendship over their bond of the reading list and really explores who wrote the list, where did the list come from, why are these books on it, what lessons does everyone have to learn, and we see how all of the characters who got the reading list into their lives somehow are connected, ultimately at the end without spoiling, of course, where the list came from. And Dawn, oh, I'm so glad, one of your favorite books of 2022 so far. And Dawn is, does not give her five stars out as freely as I do. So that is definitely a, a vote of recommendation. So that's The Reading List by Sarah Nisha Adams. It's a feel-good book. And if you're a book lover, it's doubly feel-good. Oh, good, Kate. Move it up. Move it up on your list. You're going to love this. Now, if you love the reading list, then I think you'll like this next book as well. This is The Authenticity Project, which is like the reading list, but with notebooks. So there is an, an older man um, who is living alone, who is struggling a bit, and he ends up deciding to tell his real story in a notebook. All of the stuff that's not going well, his loneliness, his depression, all of it writes it out in a notebook and purposefully leaves it in a public place for someone to find. Someone does find it, seeks him out, and the story goes from there. So the idea is that this notebook kind of travels from person to person and that somehow these people all get connected together around their braveness, I guess, to tell their story in the notebook and find their actual truth. I loved this one too. Reading list, authenticity project. I would put them side by side for book lovers and notebook lovers. And again, if we're thinking of how this might spark some, some summer self-care, it definitely made me and others in our book club that read it think about, you know, what would we write in an authenticity, authenticity project notebook? What stories do we not share with people? that if we did could make our life bigger and better and richer. And so this was just a lovely book that had a lot of moving parts, a lot of neat storylines going back and forth from character to character. And definitely I think will hold your attention and be a good book to kick off your summer reading as well. Yeah, book flight for sure. I, I love that term, definitely. And another five star. Well, you know, I gave it five stars. The next book I have right here, I'm actually reading it right now. It's our book club selection for this month. I adore epistolary novels. So tell me in the chat box, do you also love books that are written back and forth in letters or emails too? It is my favorite kind of genre, favorite. It just makes me want to get out old fashioned, you know, cards and pencils and start writing to people that I know, I love it. I love novels in verse two, Amy. Those are some of my favorites. Love and Saffron is fairly new. It's all over the podcast circuit. It's all over social media and for good reason. It is a novel of friendship, food and love as it says on the cover. And it goes back and forth between these two unlikely people who become pen pals. We have an older author and a younger kind of fangirl. They end up sharing these letters over a, a shared love of food, particularly um, a packet of saffron that gets tucked into one of the uh, envelopes. And the story chronicles their friendship and their back and forth 
over time. It ends with the recipes in the book too, which is always something that I love. I never cook them, but just knowing that I could kind of recreate that experience in the book is, is really fun. So if you love epistolary novels like I do, you know, things like 84 Charing Cross Road or the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society book, Love and Saffron would definitely be one to add to your TBR this summer. It's a quick moving book. Um, I have a feeling you could read it quite quickly and it might be a nice quick little check off of your TBR to keep your reading life going on a, at a nice pace. So that's Love and Saffron. And if you have other epistolary novels that you love, I would love those in the chat box too, because I, I can't get enough of those. I just love them. There is a middle grade version that is through emails rather than letters, which is, I always get the title wrong, but I think it's two, two owl from dogfish, two night owl from dogfish. I will have to get the correct setting. Let me jot that down, the correct title and make sure I put that in there. Uh, it's a, an epistolary novel, but through a combination of emails and texts and written letters. So send me all of those titles. And yes, you're writing down like crazy. The recording will be posted and I'll, don't worry, I'll, I'll have the handout too, Deb. Okay, up next, looking at the clock here. Oh, I forgot about this one. Lessons in Chemistry, I wanted to pair as a pick with this one as well. It is not an epistolary novel. It's on my TBR. Um, so I haven't read it yet, but the description of it seems very much like it could be aligned with this book. It's about food. It's about um, some friendships, some life changes, and I think could definitely be nice paired together. Brand new. Everybody's talking about it, and it is one that is definitely on my TBR. Dear Mr. Henshaw. Yes, Kate, I love that one too. Okay, now we're going to Emily Henry. We mentioned her earlier. I highly recommend Book Lovers. I know some of you here have read it. I actually haven't read it yet. It's in my stack. I have read People You Meet on Vacation and I have Beach Read ready to go as well. So let me put those other ones up there. But Book Lovers, of course, is the one that everyone is talking about now. We've got two sisters that decide to get away on a little summertime break. One of them is in the book publishing business who just so happens to find her publishing nemesis in the same location over the same summer. And the book chronicles what happens next. So it is a rom-com and Emily Henry does them beautifully. So it's definitely a feel good summer read. The same with Beach Read and People We Meet on Vacation. Um, People We Meet on Vacation is the one that I read recently and I just fell in love with Alex and Poppy who are really good friends since college who go on a different vacation together every summer until they didn't, until something happened. And the book helps, uh, helps us understand what happened and takes us on one last vacation to see if they can make things right. Emily Henry Darcy is one of your favorite too. Oh yes, Elin Hildebrand, one of another wonderful author as well. We need more days. We need more days and hours so that we can just read all of these books. We've got some more coming into the chat box. Taylor Jenkins Reid, The Gunkel, The Love Hypothesis. Yes, that one is on my list too. So glad to know that you read that, Don. I'll have to pick your brain when I'm getting ready to read that one. So those were, I believe this was my last slide for adults recommendations and the ones that kind of look similar. Yes. Okay. So we've just started this in the chat box, but if you have other adult titles that you want to suggest, put them in there. I'm always up for them. We are going to get Amy reading more personal fiction for her reading heart instead of nonfiction for her brain. Right, Amy? I'm going to check on you all summer to make sure you're, you're, indulging in just some fun old fashioned reading. Um, let's see. Oh, book flight, Deb, is actually a term that um, I wanna say Ann Bogle, at least I heard it first from Ann Bogle on Modern Mrs. Darcy. Um, she talks about books that pair well together, kind of playing on the wine flight idea or the beer, it's not a wine flight, is it? It's a beer flight, you can tell I don't, I don't drink 
beer a lot. Um, and so uh, a book flight are just a collection of books that pair nicely together. I'm just going through the chat to see if there's any others that I've missed. Oh, Hotel Nantucket, I just saw that in a Facebook uh, feed too. So that is your next to be read. They do have wine flights. Okay, Dawn, thank you. I don't feel quite so bad now. All right, I've got five more books and these are books that are going to support your connection to teachers and students. So books that you could recommend for the classroom as read alouds to add to the classroom library or simply might support any unit of study that you have coming up so that your reading life starts to infuse into teachers and students reading lives too. So before I did that though, I wanted to make sure you knew that I had another handout called 100 Books Every Teacher Should Read. It is my current favorites. I could have gone way over 100. So I give you my top 10 picture books, my top 10 realistic fiction, historical fiction, verse, poetry, nonfiction, fantasy, graphic novel, 100 of them there. I do it um, every summer. So it's kind of my most recent favorite 100s. Um, I did it because I teach a professional development class and a graduate course on children's literature. And I always wanted to give my top recommendations. And so I put this together. So if you haven't gotten it yet, I just put the link in the chat box. If you're looking for ways to boost your kid lit reading this summer to support your coaching when you go back, those are my top 100 favorites. I've just got five that I pulled from the list to showcase today. Ooh, coffee flights. I've never had a coffee flight or a toast flight. That's really neat, Kay. I'm gonna have to go to a couple of coffee shops and see if maybe they have it and I just don't know about it. Okay. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Let me go next. So I could only pick five from my top 100. These are the five <clears throat> that it would be. Excuse me. So The Road to After by Rebecca Lowell is an absolutely stunning, heartbreakingly beautiful book. It is recently published and it is based on Rebecca's actual life. She was in a marriage, an abusive marriage, where she was literally held captive with her kids for a couple of years in a not so safe environment. And this book chronicles that experience from what she imagines her younger daughter would have been experiencing. It starts off with them being in that situation, but the entire book is what happens when mom, Rebecca, we come to find out, has the courage to leave and what happens to her child's lives after that. Told in the perspective of the little girl, it shows how difficult an abusive situation certainly is, but how difficult the road to recovery can be. Even when everyone around you is helping you, you're having a hard time breaking your old patterns and your ways of thinking. And the book just does a magnificent job. This is written lyrically in verse, a beautiful job of the family's road to recovery. You'll cry, you'll smile, you'll feel all the feels, you'll hug it. I have a list in my notebook that is like books that I've hugged and the road to after is a book that I've hugged. So if you could only pick one children's literature book, one middle grade novel, it would be this. My recommendation to you would be this, The Road to After. I don't know if any others here have read it. Oh, but if you haven't, you definitely have to put it on your list. <laughs> so Deb didn't have a Goodreads account and now she has 83 books on her TBR list. Yay, Deb. But remember, you're gonna take that 83, which probably will get higher, and you're going to create that physical stack to make sure you actually get them. Welcome to the cult. I love it, not the club. Welcome to the cult. <laughs> okay, my second recommendation is Different Kinds of Fruit by Kyle Lukoff. This is another beautiful book about um, 
well, it's about a lot of things, but it is about sixth graders who are trying to figure out who they are and who they want to be. It is a big book that deals with big themes, gender identity, stereotypes around gender identity, um, prejudices around gender identity, and then also throws in this beautiful stance of family, how family can help, how family can hurt, and how sometimes family might not be what you think it is. And I can't really say a lot more because I'm afraid I'm gonna end up giving, I'm gonna to give too much away, but it is a beautiful book that just gives you a chance to step into the mind of a child and develop a perspective that is likely or maybe difficult for you to understand right now, especially as an adult educator, what classrooms are like for kids who think that they're different and what classrooms are like for kids who are trying to be themselves, but are being squashed at every turn. And so this was a book that definitely opened my eyes a whole lot. It made me think very differently. Um, and it gave me, uh, those, those mirror neurons were firing throughout. It gave me a new perspective and a, a clear sense of empathy of how, how I need to change in my thinking and what I can actually do about it to make kids feel safer, to feel that they're being seen or heard in ways that I didn't think about before. So different kinds of fruit definitely would be my second recommendation if I could only give you those five. And I'm running out of time. I'm always running out of time. Okay, number three is the Jigsaw Jungle. I love Kristen Levine. Levine, Levine, um, I originally read The Thing I'm Most Afraid Of that came up in your bottom right screen, a beautiful book about a child with anxiety and how she copes, what she does to move out of her comfort zone and ultimately make steps, take steps to make herself feel better. It's a wonderful book. So when I saw Jigsaw Jungle, I knew I would love it simply because I love this author and I did. I was a little surprised by the storyline at first. It starts out, it's from the perspective of a little girl whose parents, um, they're getting divorced or they have recently gotten divorced and all of a sudden dad disappears. And we don't know where he is. And it is Kristen's job to try to literally piece the puzzle pieces together because dad actually leaves a clue behind of where he might be and why he is choosing to stay away in a puzzle piece clue. And it is um, the main character's job to take those clues and fit the puzzle pieces together. But what dad did in such a beautiful way is really carefully curate the clues that he was giving her from afar to take her on a journey to learn more about her dad and about her entire life, her entire family that she didn't know before because of some family strife. Beautifully done. Again, I was a little, a little taken aback in the beginning of, of how dad just left and no one knew why. And now all of a sudden a puzzle piece was arriving. But when you keep reading, literally the pieces come together and it is just a beautiful book. So if you haven't read Kristen's book, Thing I'm Most Afraid Of and Jigsaw Jungle, Thing I'm most afraid of if you want to tackle anxiety, Jigsaw Jungle, if you want to delve more into family and what that means and how challenging some of those relationships can be. Two more to go. One young adult, one picture book, and then we will wrap up. This is the young adult book. This, this um, covers fascinate me of the choices that publishers make about covers. This was actually not the cover on my book. I have lost my way, but it's the only cover I could find online. And it is about three teenagers who end up coming together unexpectedly under a bridge in New York City. I can't say much more than that without giving it away of how that happens, but they are three very different kids who all feel lost in their own way. And the story goes back and forth between character to character and you eventually learn their stories you figure out why they feel so lost and what, what they're going through and then how finding each other may have been the very thing they need to actually find what's next for them. Kate, you're reading it now. You're loving it. I'm, or maybe that may have been for a different book. I just opened the chat box. 
So this is a wonderful young adult book, kind of, kind of, almost like a coming of age book of what what am I going to do? My life has turned upside down. I need to figure out the next step. I don't know what it is, but maybe my support system I now have can help me get there. So I have lost my way by Gail Foreman. And if you love Gail Foreman, then another book that recently came out, I want to say early last year is Frankie and Bug. Frankie and Bug was this great book about a summer, um, a summer vacation. So perfect to read right now. Frankie and Bug are kind of stuck together. They didn't plan on it. They didn't want it, but it is what it is. And they are stuck together in Venice Beach on California back in the 80s. Yes, it's considered historical fiction, which is just crazy to think about the 80s as being historical fiction. But together they come around their shared love of figuring out mysteries. And so there is a big mystery, a kind of a murder mystery that is not really talked about in a big way. So it's nothing scary um, in the book, but they come together around their hope to solve this mystery and in the process end up healing some things in their families as well. So it's a really, it's a really great middle grade novel. And last is a picture book. I love Brad Montague. I love Kid President. I love all his videos. I love everything that this man and now his wife has put out into the world. And this book is a beautiful picture book. It's beautiful for kids. It's beautiful for teachers in classrooms, but it's also a beautiful book for thinking about our coaching as well and our personal lives. It's called The Circles All Around Us. Uh, Brad wrote the words, his wife drew the beautiful pictures. And it's about finding your circle, where you are, where you're comfortable, what your boundaries are, but then encouraging us to make them just a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger, whether that's our personal circle and finding out more things that we like and want to try, whether it's our professional circles and we're trying to learn new skills or it's our friendship circles and we're trying to kind of broaden who we see every day and who we understand and who we seek out. Beautiful book for just broadening our lives in general. Yes, it definitely makes a good gift for sure. I'm just seeing those titles come in, John. Um, it's, it's just lovely for so many ways and definitely graduation almost. It could be a good graduation gift as well. Now I've got other picture books that I love and I know some of you are in that group with me already. Um, I've got 49 other picture books that I use in my coaching. I love reading picture books to teachers and using the book to launch conversations rather than just me and my discussion prompts, because we know that doesn't always work. We can ask a question to crickets, but if we read a book, it gets teachers talking. So if you don't know about that group and you love picture books as much as I do, in the link, I'll send you... Um, the lead, leading with literature or lead with literature link. I've got 50 books there now, and I've got another collection that will go in August, just in time to kick off the new school year. It's kind of my picture book obsession. Oh, yay. So glad that they're using it. Excellent. I'm so glad, right? It takes the stress off a bit when the book can start the conversation instead of the coach. All right, you are good students because I see the other book recommendations coming in. The War That Saved My Life, definitely all Alan brought, Save Me a Seat, all where stars are scattered for sure. What else came in? Watercress is beautiful. Oh, other Words for Home, The Bridge Home, Front Desk. Oh my gosh, these are all such good books. Excellent, excellent titles. Again, I will lift them all from the chat box so that we can send them out. And I've got my core collection that will be in a handout as well. So I've just got two more things that I wanted to share because I know I've, I've kept you over, but I've mentioned a couple of times the Get Literate community. It's, it's my digital community of, it's, it, we're all women. Um, we're mainly educators. There's only a couple who are educators and we just come together because we want to have a more robust reading and writing life. So there are things like book calendars. That's, that's my new thing. And it's my favorite where I recommend a different book every day. We've got book clubs and writing prompts and coaching for your reading life and your writing life. 
We've got a reading retreat kickoff coming up next week. We've had notebook parties, just things to keep reading and writing front and center in our lives so that we can keep getting all of those really good physical, cognitive, emotional benefits. So if that sounds like a community that you'd like, I will put the link to the handout to get literate in, in that as well. And then I also am doing, um, well, actually here, let's give you the link first. This is the link to the handout. Let me just copy it from Google. So you'll see, got a little bit about me and then all the links that I've shared and then all the books it just keeps going and going. So the main 15, and then I will add the books that were in the chat as well. So maybe you scan the QR code, but if not, here's the link in the chat box. And then my last thing is this. Usually over the summer, I do some kind of boot camp. I don't think we need a boot camp this summer. I think we need a retreat. I don't think we need a boot camp at all. So I am doing a summer retreat for instructional coaches. It starts July 18th on a Monday, goes Monday through Friday, one hour sessions in the morning, kind of retreat like topics. I'm just gonna click on it so that I can scroll to the sessions for you. So day one, how to reclaim our coaching vision. Day two, how to make personality work for us. So things like upholders, things like our brain how to create keystone coaching habits, those opening routines, closing routines, startup, shutdown routines that make our lives better and easier. Notebooking and bullet journaling for coaching to keep ourselves a little bit more organized and productive. And then a little planning party at the end. Lots of templates, calendars, vision pages, checklists, and a 21 day email challenge to make sure you bring the retreat information to your coaching when the year starts. So I forgot to copy that link. I'll throw that in the chat box. I'm just working out all the details for that, but I figured I would share that in the chat box. Oh, I see the boot camp love coming in the chat box. Thank you so much for that. I think it's time for a retreat this summer for sure. Okay, here is the last slide. Oh no, wait one second. I had my contact information there. So what comes next? I'm going to send, I'll send the recording an email in case you wanna catch up on a couple of the sessions and for people who are unable to come, I'll send the handout and that will have all of the links shared, the 15 books, and I will take all of this from the chat box, lift out the book titles into a list and I will send that to everyone as well. So that is it. How many minutes did I go over? Nine minutes. Not so bad, but what I've done in the past. Okay. Oh, thanks, Char. Do more of these. I Picture books to use for instruction. I would happily do a live session on that. I'm going to jot that down. That's what I want for us this summer. I want sessions like this. I want to refuel and reboot and recharge um, after what well, I was gonna say what seems like years of challenge. It, it is years of challenge as we look to a new year. So that is it for me. Thank you so much for spending an hour with me on a, a Saturday morning. Hopefully you have some really great plans coming up for the rest of the weekend. And for some of you here, I'll see you next week for our Get Literate Retreat and others. Hopefully I will see you online. Remember to post the pictures of your book stacks, your TBR stacks online for some book love. I'll choose a couple of those and send some, some books or some bookish delights your way. So thanks. See you later. Happy reading. <laughs>